Hi, today I'm drawing Cork Abbey. This is a very impressive stately home in the Midlands. Uh, it's one I visited uh, recently. I've been away for a couple of weeks visiting friends and family and that's why there haven't been any videos from me uh, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, but I thought this would be a good one to draw and I want to keep a nice record of it so I'm drawing it in my moleskin watercolour sketchbook. So I'm going to talk you through what I'm doing here. I've printed out my reference photo and it's pretty much exactly the same size as I want to draw the building in my notebook. So I can use my pencil to measure and get the proportions exactly right. And then I divide it up into shapes. So I've got little rectangles uh, for each section. Uh, for that centre section and then the kind of the wings on the, the left and right side of the building too. And then it's really just a case of uh, looking at the picture and seeing where all the different sections are and just drawing, yeah, mostly really simple shapes, little rectangles and then little bits that stick out, pointy bits for the sort of bits of decorative stonework. I'm just making sure I've got the centre recessed a little bit. And then I put in some guidelines for where the windows should go. If you look closely at the photo, um, which you'll be able to do if you download it, I'll put a link down below for that. Then you'll see that the windows at the top are slightly bigger than the ones in the middle, and then they're slightly bigger again than the ones at the bottom. So I want to make sure I've got those kind of proportions right and I put in some guidelines to kind of track all the way along the building to get the windows in place. There's a lot of windows in this building. It's what takes most of the time, but it does make it look very grand. And the centre of the building, it's got three kind of doorways at the bottom and then four pillars. Around the front there's a little pathway and then right in the centre, you can't really see it on the photograph because there are children in the way, uh, but there's a little, I'm not sure if it's a fountain, maybe just like a big vase. For the uh, sketching part of this I'm using a 0.2 Unipin pen, but any waterproof pen will work just fine and I'm just going over my sketch lines. And for each section, I'm adding in detail as I go. And mostly that detail is just like repeating some of those lines. At the top of the columns, there's some little curly squiggles. The columns are slightly bigger at the bottom than they are at the top. And then everything else is just like a little rectangle or an extra line. And it's like the more lines you put in, the more kind of ornate and grand it looks. So it's worthwhile using a, a fairly small nibbed pen for this, uh, because then that allows you to get lots of that extra detail in. So I could have started anywhere, but I decided to start in the middle and then work out so um, I can keep it nice and proportionate and keep the whole building in mind as I, as I draw. I'm starting with the little parapet details on the top. And again, reinforcing the lines by kind of drawing two or three together and it just gives it that sense of like some intricately carved stonework. I spent a little bit of time working out where the, the kind of stone supports for the, uh, the railing bit at the top are. Making sure they're nice and evenly spaced.
and then just a little curve and a curve a little curve and a curve just gives that sense of like the little uh, supports in there that are kind of just not quite straight and then each of the uh the sections at the front has got a pillar on as well and that's got lots of fancy stonework on it too it's mainly just a case of piling up rectangles on top of one another a bigger rectangle a smaller rectangle and then a couple of circles and then another rectangle and then I draw the bottom of the pillar and join the two together and give it some fluting on the column Yeah, so basically I'm looking at the picture and where I see any kind of detail, I'm trying to put something in that kind of looks a bit like that. But obviously I'm not going to get quite the level of detail that's actually on the building because you wouldn't see it unless you were right close up to it. But just a few lines and squiggles in the right place and then repeating them across the building. It just gives it that sense that there's a lot going on. So now I'm looking at different bits of the building and seeing what can I what can I see that needs to be on there. There are extra pillars kind of hidden in these recesses, but I don't want to spend a lot of time putting in a lot of detail there. So just the odd line, just to make it look like there's something there. And then any bits of decorative stonework or anything are really good to put in. And then I can start on the windows. And this is quite a task. So first of all, I start by going around the outside of the windows and putting in like the decorative stonework there. It's not exactly what you can see on the picture. It's kind of my interpretation of it. And I'm just doing the same for each window. It's like each window has got a bit of a, like an eyebrow over it with the, with a little bit of um, stonework in the centre and then the rest looks a bit like picture framey. So a couple of lines down the sides and a couple of lines at the bottom of where the windowsill would be. And I just keep adding windows in all the spaces. I'm not going to show you the whole building because I keep doing the same thing over and over again. I'll just show you what I do on the left hand side of the building. But just know that I just repeat exactly the same on the right. In the centre of the building there are exactly the same windows behind the pillars. They're a little bit harder to see. And there's a little bit of extra kind of decorative stonework in the centre as well. need to add the flagpole now and yes that little statue urn vase thing in the center and then it's time to go back to the windows and add even more and for each window I'm putting in the wooden window frame now so each one gets its window divided into kind of two sashes a top and a bottom sash and then I put in the mullions as I've discovered they're called the little bits that divide all the window panes up and if you look very closely at the picture you'll see that each window has two kind of vertical mullions but they've got different numbers of horizontal ones because the windows are different sizes so the top ones have got four the middle ones have got three and the bottom ones have got two And again, it's just a case of repeating that all the way across the drawing.
now want my building to kind of sit in the landscape and not look, kind of look like it's floating. So I can just put in a few little lines that indicate plants on either side and, uh, and some of the trees behind it as well. And I like the contrast that they give to all of the straight lines in the building as well. Now I take a, an eraser and erase all my pencil marks and I can see if there's anything that I've missed. And yeah, just a few places where I think there could be a little bit more detail and I can add that in now. Now I'm ready to paint. And I've got two colours mixed up here. One is just a, a, a simple yellow ochre, there's nothing mixed in with it. And then the second one is a little mix of burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And I just put the two side by side on the palette and I dip into them alternately. So sometimes I'm going in with the yellow and sometimes I'm going in with this kind of dirty brown colour. That's because I can see on the building that originally it was a lovely kind of pale, maybe sandstone, I think. Uh, but obviously over the years it's weathered and there are bits that are darker and, and a bit muckier. So if I use a mix of these different colours, it just gives that sense of the building being a little bit weathered and old. just painting a simple wash of this colour all over uh, the building, but I'm leaving the windows. I mix up a little bit more of that kind of dirty brown colour and use it to add some areas that are a little bit darker in some of the places on the building where I can see there's uh, yeah, a little bit darker stonework. Um, I'm doing this while it's all still wet. And then I use the same colour to paint in a little bit of the foreground and the path. Just doing that very lightly and spreading it out. Now I've mixed up a much darker version of that burnt umber and ultramarine combination. And I'm using it with my very small paintbrush just to dot into the windows where the window panes are for the windows that you can see where there's not a blind. Some of the windows have got blinds and they just look white. Other ones, obviously there's no blind drawn and you can see into the room behind and it looks dark. So I'm just adding in that dark color there. So yeah, I'm just dotting it on because I want some areas of white in there just to look like the white window frames so you can still see them. So now I'm mixing up some greens. I start with ultramarine blue and I add in a little bit of yellow. It doesn't really matter which yellow and I can't honestly remember which one I used for this. I've got one side of that mix quite bright, greeny, limey, greeny, lots of yellow in it. And then the other side with lots of blue. And I use a variation to give a sense of different types of plants that have got different kind of colors of foliage. And I add more of the bluey, darky green at the bottoms of the plants to make them look like they're more in shadow there. Mix the two colours pretty much together to get a mid-green for the lawn and I just kind of spread that around. I just want to kind of give an indication of the lawn there. I don't want to give it too much detail. Now I want to add in a little bit of blue sky so I just drop in a little bit of cerulean blue and then take some water and blend it out. Now my favourite bit is just adding the shadows. I mix up more of that grey, a little bit more blue this time, uh, the burnt umber and ultramarine combination, and I use my small paintbrush and I paint that 
underneath anything that would be sticking out on the building. So any of the parapets and, and, and quite a bit underneath the pillars at the front because they're quite recessed there. And then every single window, I go, I'll draw a little line underneath the top of the window. This is a very subtle effect, but I do like it. It does make the whole thing kind of come to life. Add a little bit more under those pillars because I want them to stand out and make the building behind them look like it's recessed a bit, which it is. And then I can add some kind of darker, more shadow areas into the foliage at the back as well. Finally, a tiny little bit of blue for the flag, and we're all done. So thanks very much for watching today. I really hope that you enjoyed this. There will be a link to the reference image down below, so if you want to paint along with me, you can. And if this is a style that you like, you may be interested to know that I have one or two slots for house portraits available in time for Christmas. So they've just gone up on my Etsy store, and there'll be a link for that down below too. So thanks very much, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye-bye.